Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new, this YouTube channel is dedicated to talking about how to get full postgraduate scholarships in top universities around the world. And if you're not new, thank you for coming back. So today we'll be talking about three major points you should have at the back of your mind why searching for a PhD topic. So if you've decided to undertake a PhD research, I say good luck to you. And um, as you know, you need a research, um, a research topic. In most universities in Europe, they also need you to write a research proposal while applying for the PhD program. In other universities in the US, Sometimes they want you to have a general idea or a general inkling towards a particular field. And so they may, they may not request um, a PhD proposal during admission. So it's good to check with the university you intend to apply to and their particular requirements when it comes to um, the application process. But still, whether you're applying to universities in the US, in Europe, in Canada, or in Australia, you still need to eventually have a research um, topic whether while you're applying or later in the process when you're already in the when you've already begun the PhD program. So today I'll be talking about key um, tips you need to have at the back of your mind while thinking of a research topic. So tip number one, you should understand the concept of original contribution to knowledge. So whatever topic you're going to be coming up with, it has to be an original contribution to that particular field you wish to specialize in. And this um, term original contribution to knowledge or this um, phrase is, um, it could be confusing at times because it's almost impossible to find a field of knowledge where there are no existing literature, existing research. So, so your university is aware of this, your supervisor, your proposed supervisor is aware of this. So what they actually want you to do, or what they actually mean by original contribution to knowledge, is that whatever field you choose to specialize in, you have to make a contribution to the existing debates, to the existing um, analysis, to the existing research. So whatever you come up with will be a contribution to what is already on ground. They are not necessarily expecting you to bring up a totally new field of knowledge that no one has heard about. I think at this stage it's almost impossible to come up with a topic that nobody has remotely spoken about in their research. So that's what they mean by original contribution to knowledge. And I, I want to add to this um, concept of, or this term of original contribution to knowledge. It has to also be a significant contribution, not just original but significant because a contribution might not be significant and therefore not suitable for a PhD research. So how do you know whether something is significant or not significant? So permit me to use the example of, um, of a house party. For instance, I was invited to a house party and with several other people and the guests decided to, the, the host I mean, decided to pass a number of lists around and then um, the guests, including me, we need to bring um, some things for entertainment during the party. So when the list got to me, I checked through the list. I saw what other people were bringing. Fruit salad, drinks, um, desserts. So I decided to bring something new, which um, no other person is bringing. So I decided to bring my spicy West African jollof. And I told the host about this and was like, yeah, this is a significant and original contribution to the party. So imagine if I decided to bring chocolates, for instance. And the host says, oh no, we have somebody bringing chocolates already or what is already bringing chocolate cake. So you might want to bring something else. Or well, I may mean, decide to bring a bar of soap and the, the host might say, no, we don't really need the bar of soap here. We need something edible. And um, so why this is an original contribution, it is not significant. So it's um, important to merge these two concepts, original and significant contribution to knowledge. So whatever topic you're thinking about, whatever research um, interest you have, Make sure it is original and significant. If you're not sure about the significance of your research, talk to your proposed um, university, your proposed supervisor, and your proposed department. The second point is, 
they should be thinking more of a research question than a research topic. Topics can be very broad and amorphous, but a research question helps you to narrow down your interest, narrow down your scope and gives you a focus. For instance, you want to look at um, civilian deaths in police custody in the US. That's the broad topic. Civilian deaths and police custody in the US. But this doesn't tell you much, doesn't tell you or doesn't give your your supervisor much knowledge about how you seek to approach this broad topic. But when you narrow it down to a particular question, a particular set of questions, then your ideas begin to, to become clearer. For instance, after I come up with a topic or with a general interest in civilian deaths in police custody in the US, and I come up with a question, um, and I come up with a question that goes thus: Why are more civilian deaths recorded in the US than any other developed democracies um, in the world? Or better put, why are there more civilian deaths in police custody in the US? than any other developed democracy in the world. So this is a very sharp, a focused question, and it helps clarify the vague and otherwise um, general research topic. So when you're thinking about a topic, think about a corresponding question. Or you might even begin by thinking about a question instead of a topic. Because find, finding a topic is not so much of the problem here. In fact, your question can actually be your topic as well. Yes, your question can actually be your topic as well. So invest most of your intellectual energy in looking for a research question or research questions as the case may be. And this will help you focus your interest and um, clarify your ideas. The third point I would like to point out is um, the importance of data or evidence to back up your research. And even though you've not started yet, even though you are still discerning what to research on, make sure that whatever topic you pick, or whatever research question you pick, there is um, data out there to back up your research, or there's evidence out there. Because what's the point in picking a research topic or a research question where um, the data is inaccessible? There are certain um, research topics you might pick and the data you need are in classified um, database and you, you cannot get access to it. For instance, they are in the government top secret um, database, but they are in very sensitive, um, very sensitive areas where it's difficult to actually get data. For instance, you are researching something about terrorism, about drug cartels, about human trafficking. It is true that there are a number of research in these fields already, but they are certain hurdles you have to you have to climb in order to get data. So start thinking about how doable your research is, especially as regards to getting the vital information you need to carry out this research. So look at, look at the, 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 ethical, um, the, ethical, the ethical problems that, that may arise, the accessibility to this data, and the doability, the general doability of this, of this um, topic or of this research question you've chosen. Because again, what's the point if after coming up with a beautiful topic, a beautiful question, you cannot access the data? A um, few months ago, you must have heard of the, of the English researcher who went to the Middle East to gather data about, I think, security-related um, issues and was arrested for espionage and he languished several months in um, a jail in the Middle East because they, they thought he was a spy. So it took several interventions by the British government to, for him to regain his freedom. So these are some of the things you have to think about while thinking of a research question and um, a research um, topic. That is the data available. How can I get the data? When can I get the data? You just want to make sure that the data wouldn't be the problem because after all, this is the meat of your research. So that's it, guys. These are the three things, three major factors you should think about why searching for or clarifying what um, research you wish to undertake for your PhD. So the first one, remember that it has to be a significant and original contribution to your um, field of study. 
the, the second one, a very clear research question or sets of research questions. Then the third one, start thinking now about the availability of data because this determines the doability of the research in the first place. So that's it guys, a very short one to help you clarify your ideas. Make sure you subscribe, click on the notification bell to get alerted when I post videos on this YouTube channel. And until then, I'll see you later.